So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. We live a sustainable life. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our black eyed peas going. And it doesn't take very long for black eyed peas to cook, not like brown beans and stuff. So I'm gonna get me a cup. I'm going to measure out my, my dry beans. I'm going to put them in the colander and I'm going to rinse them real good. Then I'm going to put them in a little pot of uh, water, bring them up to a boil. I may season them a little bit and then I'm going to, they'll cook in about 30, 45 minutes. We'll have some tender black eyed peas. So while my black eyed peas are cooking, I've got five slices of bacon in my iron skillet that I cut up and I'm just going to render that down. Get that uh, cooked up good and crispy. It's going to give me some good bacon dripping. And when I get my bacon cooked, I'm going to put it, take it out, put it to the side, and then I'm going to put a pound of sausage, uh, breakfast sausage, and I'm going to cook it. Now I've chose a a mild uh, sausage. You can use a, a hot and spicy sausage if you want to. You can even not even use sausage. You can use ground beef, maybe that you seasoned up somehow. But the sausage really tastes good in this dish. So I'm gonna lift the bacon render up. I've got one large bell pepper cut up here. And I had a red one, so that's what we're using. I've got a medium onion cut up. I got my sausage, my peas are cooking. Over here I'll be making my cornbread. Now, like we said, you can use uh, just store-bought canned peas. But, so you won't be cooking them like I am here. Now, I've got all kinds of canned up dry beans that I can up myself. But one of them I didn't have in the pantry was black eyed peas. I had dry black eyed peas. I just didn't have any canned up. I had purple hole and red beans and pinno and black and white beans and you gave it. I just didn't have none of the black eyed peas canned up. <clears throat> but like I said, it doesn't take long to, uh, to cook up a cup or so of your black eyed peas. So I even took some of my bacon and put in here with my black eyed peas. Uh, your black eyed peas are going to be mixed up with so many other ingredients that they're going to have a good taste anyway. But this is going to be so good. And with that cornbread on top, it's just going to be a meal in one. It'll be delicious. Okay, my bacon's done, and I'm going to take it out of my skillet. <clears throat> then I'm going to put my sausage in here and cook it. Pretty much, you know, you're going to do everything in, in the one pan except for cooking your peas. Now, if you had just store-bought canned up peas, you wouldn't have to be using another pot, but we are. So there's some pretty good bacon grease in there. Now we're going to take our pound of breakfast sausage. We're going to cook it up. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. And see if I can find my handy dandy meat cutter upper. 
I've had several people that have uh, sent me some of these, and believe me, I go through them too. My sausage is still just a little bit frozen, so it may take it a little bit to cook. I'm going to let it cook a minute, and then I'll <clears throat> try to cut it up a little bit there. Our bacon's cooked, and as soon as we get this sausage cooked, we'll be sauteing our bell peppers and our onions and all that. Our peas are looking good. Should be done in about 15 more minutes. <laughs> Getting your head not cut off. We'll just kind of lift it up then. They, they need to see the bowl. But anyways, I've got two cups of my self-rising, I think it's Aunt Jemima, white cornmeal mix. Two cups. And this is just simple cornbread. If you want to, you can add um, a little bit of sugar to it. We don't want no sugar. I've got a fourth of a cup of oil. Did you fix it, Mr. Brown? It's fixed. Okay. <laughs> I've, Maybe. I've got one egg. And I've got um, just a little over a cup of milk here. I never know exactly how much it's going to take. It just differs. I'm going to go ahead and pour a cup, though. And that's just our simple cornbread that's going to go on top of all this goodness. We've got our sausages cooked. We've got our bacon cooked. Our peas are done. So all we got to do next is saute our onions and our bell peppers. And it's smelling pretty good in here, isn't it? it smells wonderful. I'm going to pour enough milk in here. And it's going to kindly give me a loose uh, batter. That way, when I pour it over our mixture, you know, to kind of spread out, and I can spread it out pretty easy. Because if it's too thick, it's kind of hard to spread it over your, your other stuff. And I think that's pretty good right there. You see the consistency. So that's all there is to that. Hey, all we gotta do next is get these bell peppers. We need to put a little uh, olive oil. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Be careful with that lid. It came off of me, on me the other day, and I had olive oil everywhere. I don't know why. It's like all of a sudden it don't want to fit right. Now, if uh, after cooking the bacon and the sausage, I did have a little bit of grease left, but it, it had all that sausage grease in it. So we kind of discarded it. And we're going to cook this in olive oil. And we've drained the sausage. Yeah. Sausage is good. The bacon's good. Corn this milk. is one of my favorite parts. I know. That's why I'm going to give you the, the wooden spoodle and let you do it. My favorite bell pepper are red bell peppers. That's why um, I choose them over green any time. To me, they just are a little bit sweeter. I don't know. You think? I think they are. They're good. This is, I love this smell. I know. This is one of my favorite cooking smells is saltan peppers and onions. I'm going to name off some of the other ingredients we've got here. Because we're fixing, as soon as you get that cooked, we're going to start adding all this together. And uh, I think we can get it all in there. Don't you? Yep. I mean, our peas are done. I think once we add it, it's, we're still going to have plenty of room for cornbread on top. And that pan is a, what size, I forget what size skillet that is. <laughs> well, my other skillet is a... That's at least a twi 10. That one? This one. Oh, yeah, it's more than a 10. Would that be a 12? Probably. Because my big one's a 15, and then my other one was, is a 10. So it's a, it's a twelve. We're gonna okay. <laughs> my hand ain't big enough well, to measure. <laughs> from, from my thumb to the end of my fingers, eight inches. Okay. So there's another four inches over there. So it's twelve from here to here. The base may not be, but call it a twelve. We'll call it a twelve. So it's a twelve <laughs> inch iron uh, skillet and uh, cast iron skillet. 
So I've got cumin and chili powder and I got me some garlic and I ordered some more garlic from, uh, this is organic uh, from Thrive Market. I love to order uh, seasonings and spices from them. It's really good stuff. Um, let's see, I've got a can of green chilies. And of course these are mild, they're not the really hot ones. And I've also, here it is behind me. I got 16 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Now, y'all can replace what I've got here with the green chilies and the crushed tomatoes and put you a can of Rotel in there. I don't never keep Rotel. I just keep green chilies and always have some kind of canned tomatoes. So <laughs> I'm just telling them they can replace this with a can of Rotel. So, and we also got a cup of chicken stock. You can use beef if you'd rather use beef or vegetable. And uh, we're getting there. Pretty quick. And all that's smelling good. It's smelling more than good. <laughs> I know, we're going to have a late, late supper time, ain't we? Well, we've had a very productive day, though. Yeah, we have. You got to babysit grandkids. Or your daughter went to work. Yes. Because yeah. we're off on, still on Christmas vacation, so we're good. You know what? I need to start our oven. <clears throat> I done forgot about that. We're going to start it at 350. You know, Jerry Clower said he, you know, drove a wooden stake down through the wooden water fence where the hog, you know, been rooting out. That's kind of the day I've had. Oh, my goodness. I'm hot. They've ain't had no hog rooting out. I had uh, cleaned the wood cook stove, the flue, the whole, if you've never messed with a wood cook stove, <laughs> there's a lot more to it than just uh, putting fire in it. So I went through and did the flue and the whole inside of the stove around the oven all up on top inside and I got all the crystal out of it. Which is good because I was thinking earlier, it's supposed to get down, what, 19 this weekend? 16. It's supposed to get down in the teens, and Monday and Tuesday, I don't think it's barely going to get above freezing. So that means Saturday during the day, I can use my, my oven and my work cook stove because it's going to be that cold. It's going to be cold. I can shut that thing down and fire it up and get to cooking something. So that's exciting. And then I went out. I didn't drive no steak, no, I don't have no hogs, but I went out and finished the top <laughs> of not, the chicken Not no house. more, huh? Chicken, chicken house. Chicken, my chicken pen, I got some hens that, young hen that's flying out, and I like a couple of pieces of war. So I put, I usually use woven war, I have some old woven war, so. I put two pieces of woven war and done some bracing. And then, I cut down some small trees. I cut the little tree in out of the chicken pen. Then oh, went, you did? Then I went around and cut all these sprouts that's coming up around the trees in the yard that likes to whack you in the head when you're, <laughs> when you're mowing. So I did that today. Yesterday, you spread a bunch of chat around the house. It looks so much better. Yesterday, a whole load of gravel we spread all around the front of the house. Re-gravel. We've been here seven years since that gravel was put down and it was starting to show a little bit of dirt here and there, so. It just, it looks cleaner now. This is pretty well sauteed. Yes, it is. So now we can start adding our ingredients and I'll let you do that. Let me do it. I sure will. And I think the first time we're, thing we're gonna add are the wet ingredients. So we'll go ahead and, and add our cup of chicken stock. Chicken stock. And you got 16 ounces of uh, crushed tomatoes. You can use diced tomatoes if you want to. We got a little can of green chilies, which is four ounces. I can't believe I get to do the honors putting this food on. I know it. If you want to, you can go ahead and stir that up just a little bit. That was my next plan. <laughs> Now, we're going to go ahead and put our sausage and our black eyed peas in there and uh, just 
kind of just heat it up a little bit. We won't put our bacon in yet. And I've got to get some cheese out too. This is going to have cheese in it. Yum. <laughs> Boy, it smells so good. You know, it smells like real good. Um, this is going to be the first time that we've eaten this. The first time. I mean, we've, eat, we've eaten things similar to this, but a black eyed pea cornbread casserole like. Let me go ahead and put that sausage in. Go ahead and put sausage in. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go ahead and put your seasonings in. Go wait, ahead. You want me to do it? I got a teaspoon of cumin. I'll put a teaspoon and a half. And I've got a teaspoon of chili powder. And we're going to put a teaspoon of this good roasted garlic from Thrive Market. Can you smell it? You can stir that up and then we'll put our peas and sausage in there. I think I'm going to have to put some pepper in it. You don't think it'll be spicy enough? Black okay, you go right ahead. There's some right there, you grinder, you can put in there. Um, I've had some questions. People ask me what happened to my electric uh, pepper grinder. This is the deal. My patience was wearing thin, <laughs> was wearing thin on it because we cook so much and we use so much pepper and salt that uh, the batteries kept running down on me. So I was either <laughs> Gonna have to get better batteries or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh my! A little bit of salt. Now, do you want to taste that? Turn that up. I'm gonna have to get my longer cord. Is it rude? Yeah, rude. It's good. Wood? Is it good? Wait a minute. I just stuck that in my mouth. <laughs> what? I just stuck that in my mouth. Use this one. So. I know it's just me and you eating it, but still. So you don't think it's going to get hot enough to kill any germs in no. it? No. Oh, no. <laughs> now, remember, it's going to have all this other stuff in it, so. Go ahead and. Throw your black eyed peas in there. Drained. Drained. Drained black eyed peas. Mm hmm. And my one cup of dry beans ended up being two cups of cooked beans, 16 ounces. Wow. There ain't, there's just no way this can't be good. I could eat that right there, couldn't you? <laughs> I know one thing for sure and certain. What's that? The pan's getting fuller. Yeah, it is. I'm going to spread these peas out good. Good job. Now, you want sausage in there? Yes. If we have some good... That uh, was a pound of sausage, right? Yes. A breakfast sausage. Just mild breakfast sausage. We're out of our... Homegrown sausage. Yeah, we're out. I've eaten or eating. Or I, you've ate? I've eaten. You've ate. <laughs> I have ate. You've eaten, but you've ate. I've ate, but I've eaten all of my sausage. Mm-hmm. I can't say eating. Well, you, if you want to, <laughs> I don't care. Um, That's the hillbilly coming out of him, ain't it? We're going to have to get some hogs, though. Probably about spring, I don't know. Man, that looks good. I can believe it. Well, I can, but. It's good stuff. Look at that. That looks good now. You know, so, there's so many people I talk to, and you know that black eyed peas are not my favorite bean. Uh, Nor your favorite pea. True. <laughs> <laughs> and I love purple hole, and I love crowd. Uh, Filled peas, stuff like that. Yes, I love most beans now. I just love them. Black eyed peas just aren't my favorite. But 
if I can do something like this, I'll just eat the poo out of them. And you remember uh, last year at this time, we made uh, a black eyed pea gumbo. You remember that? We got yeah. a video, and we'll put that down below in the description box. Gumbo, yeah. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's heated through pretty good because it's fixing to go in the oven. Now, this is going to go in a 350 oven. Usually, my cornbread goes in at about 425. But this is going to um, do a different kind of cooking. So, 350, that way it all gets cooked and gets done. Now, you got some bacon here. So we're going to just sprinkle that on top. And that was some pretty good bacon to it. It rendered out really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you gonna put that cheese on there? Yeah, I had to go there. I forgot my cheese. We're gonna put cheese on top of this. Now, I, I could have started that in the cornbread. You know what? It'd be all right. You think? Yep. It might have been easier to spread the cornbread. Cornbread's gotten kind of thick on me because it's set here. Oops. It'll spread. You have a lot of faith in me, don't you? Picking up. If you get a regular spoon and start spreading that, it'll spread right out. <laughs> you want me to get a spoon? I ain't talking to nobody else in here. Now this ain't going to be like a really thick, but it's going to be Good. Well, I kind of like mine. I don't. I'd really I know it. you like a thin biscuit, and you like thin cornbread. I'd rather have it just a little thinner. To spread it out as good as you can, all the way around. Probably should have wet my bottom of my spoon. You're doing good. You got to go on it. You got to go in a circle. You got to go in a counterclockwise. <laughs> If you go on a clockwise, it'll it'll come apart on you. Now, at the end of this video too, there's going to be a small video of me going out to the greenhouse and out to the high tunnel and gathering up a bunch of really nutrition gre nutritious greens. We had kale, Where spinach. I know it. We got kale and spinach and Swiss chard. We just got all kinds of greens. And I just done a short video on making wilted grains. Remember we had that the night with pork chops. They were so good. And they were so good. Um, I don't like cooking my greens to death because it just cooks the nutrients plumb out of them. But wilting them, it's a, it's a good way to cook yeah, them. Yeah, they were still a little almost crunchy. They were good. Oh, they were good. And uh, so if y'all stay with us after we get this cooked and taste it, that video will be coming up. Okay. Looks like the oven's about ready. It's about ready. Can you handle that big old thing? Or do you need a... I don't know if I can or not. Another one? I probably could, but I'm not going to chance it. <laughs> now, I'm ready. not sure how long... Well, looky there. Somebody forgot to take the pan out of the oven. That don't ever happen, does it? <laughs> Go ahead and stick that in there. You can take that. Now, I don't know how long this is going to take. It's probably going to take anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes in my oven. We'll see. And then when we come back, we <laughs> Mr. Brown's standing over there with that hot pan that came out of the oven. We'll be back in a little bit. Go ahead. Put it right here. I'll put Well, there it is out of the oven. It took about 30 minutes. Now I'm going to 
try to get some out of here without making a mess. Well, that's looking good. Looks like that, like that cornbread did soak up some of the juices. Look at that filling. Man, that looks good. So I'm just going to say that this is a good way to eat your cornbread and black eyed peas for the new years. Especially if you're not a black eyed pea lover. This is good stuff. It has a really good flavor to it. Cornbread is good. Everything in it is good. It's really good. Smells good. Tastes good. Is good. <laughs> so I would say it's another black eyed pea winner recipe. I like black eyed peas better than you do, huh? I know you do. But it, this is a really good recipe, though. Y'all have to try it. Like I said, especially if you're not a big fan of black eyed peas. Um, and that was really hot. Of course, you you can eat this any time of year. That's good stuff. <clears throat> and if y'all hang around a little bit longer, you'll see how I wilted my greens. And down in my description box, I will have two links to a video that we done last year with uh, the black eyed pea gumbo and Texas caviar, which has got black eyed peas in it. So yay for black eyed peas. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you guys. I'm not thinking we'll probably see you again before the new year. Who knows? We never know. We're really busy right now. But uh, we might be back in here before the new year comes. We'll see. See what we can do. So we're going to say bye from Whipwell Holler Homestead. Yum, yum. <laughs> God bless everybody. And we'll see y'all in a few days. Because we're always going to be around. We're always doing something here on the homestead. Well, we're out in the greenhouse. And I'm just wanting to get some of this young, tender kale and spinach. I come out every so often and I knit me some greens and the more that I cut on it the thicker it gets. So I'm going to get me some spinach and kale and uh, some Swiss chard I've got out here. I've done been out to the high tunnel and got some kale from out there too. And I'm going to pick me a lemon from my lemon tree that I've got in here to there it is beautiful lemon all the greens we're going to start out our bacon our warm bacon dressing by cutting up about four slices of bacon and i'm just going to render them out a little bit get them kind of crispy we'll go ahead and put my onion in there let it be cooking with the bacon This is just a small Valdea sweet onions, what this is. I like to use shallots and stuff like that when I'm making dressings, but I didn't have one, so onion will be just fine. Now the onions cooked up good, the bacon's cooked. We're gonna add a good tablespoon of minced garlic. When I say a good tablespoon, I mean uh, a heaping. If I say a good teaspoon, I mean a heaping teaspoon of whatever. We're just going to saute that garlic just about a couple seconds. Not too long, not to burn it. Now we're going to add about uh, two teaspoons of red wine vinegar a 
The dressing is already smelling so good. Now, I'm needing some Dijon mustard. And I didn't have it over here with me. If you don't have Dijon mustard, you can use uh, your coarse ground mustard. Or you can even use, if you got a little bit of mustard powder, you can use that. But I'm using a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And just kind of stir that around. Let it cook a few seconds. I got a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. I got my stove on low and I'm just going to let this cook just a minute or so. I don't want my sugars or nothing to burn. It's been cooking for about a minute and I'm going to put in about a half of a cup of beef broth. Now, you can use chicken broth or you can even use a vegetable stock, whichever you've got. I just happen to have beef stock open and that's what I'm using. Now I'm going to let this cook down just a little bit for about a minute or two. Let all them flavors kind of marry together. Now the thing about this dish is I'm not going to be cooking my, my greens. I'm going to turn my stove completely off. And I'm going to put all of my beautiful greens in here. So I'm not wanting to cook them. I just want to wilt them with the warm dressing that's still in the pan. So like I said, the oven's off, the burner's off. I'm going to take my, my fresh lemon, and I've cut it in half. And I'm just going to squeeze a, some of that good lemon juice over the top. Now I'm just going to stir all this. And I'm going to try to get every leaf. I want to get that dressing coated on every leaf if possible. And you can see how it's already, that warm dressing is already wilting these greens down. But these greens will be wilted, but still have a little bit of bite to them, and that's what I like. So we're not cooking all the nutrients plumb out of them. We're not even cooking it. We're just kind of wilting them. This is such a beautiful, fresh way to eat your greens so so good for you so good for you to be eating greens if you could somehow incorporate them in your life every day they have so much value and I can tell you this is just so good I hope you all enjoyed this video and just kind of show you how we eat our wilted grains. So y'all have a blessed new year. Have a safe and healthy 2022. We love y'all and we'll see y'all next year. God bless. Isn't that beautiful?